Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Ryan Wilson, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Corporal Rebecca Brady. We welcome the veterans who have served, those who are still serving, and the families who support them. Please stand and join in singing the national anthem. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea for this national memorial and museum came to him at Poissiere, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families, friends and Australians could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit, in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and other operations over more than a century. But first we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Sergeant Walter Farkelson of the 19th Battalion, Australian Imperial Force. Walter Farkelson was born in the seaside town of Kayama, New South Wales, one of five children. He worked as a post official and enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force in May 1915, as reports of the Gallipoli land in reached Australia. Farkelson's first experience of battle came near the French village of Pozier in July 1916. Here, Farkelson was shot in the right arm and was sent to a hospital in Cardiff, Wales, to recover. He wrote to his mother that, although it is fairly serious, I am exceedingly lucky. It is only a flesh wound. Walter enjoyed his convalescence in Cardiff. He wrote to his father that, the people here are wonderfully kind. They cannot do enough for we Australians. Farkelson took many months to recover. He wrote home to say, before I went to the Somme, I thought we were okay. But since then, I've seen what has to be done and got a slight idea of what it is going to cost. He returned to his battalion in France in early 1917, promoted to the rank of sergeant. So much had changed that he barely recognised anyone. The 19th Battalion was participating in operations against the Hindenburg Line as Farquharson rejoined it. He saw serious fighting there and wrote that this is the first time I can truthfully say I have used any rifle to shoot at a living target. He wrote his last letter sitting near line after line of barbed wire untouched by artillery. He wrote, the Germans are supposed to have miles it before the Hindenburg Line. To us will fall the opportunity of trying to break through. On the 3rd of May 1917, the 19th Battalion took part in an operation against the French, French village of Bullecour, an outpost to the Hindenburg Line. At the end of the day, Walter Farquharson was missing. In early 1918, Mr and Mrs Farquharson finally received official word that Walter had been killed in action. They had expected to hear this for some time, as they had been receiving letters and reports from France that indicated he would not be found alive. Farquharson had apparently survived the initial rush into the German trenches at Bullecourt. He and Corporal Lanny Ward found themselves holding a position until the 19th Battalion was forced to withdraw later that night. Farquharson, Ward and a Sergeant Maxey held the position until the rest of the men got back to their own trenches. Ward left Farquharson and Maxey in order to care for a wounded officer and when Ward finally got back to his lines with the officer, he was surprised to hear that Farquharson and Maxey had never returned. Maxie's body was later found, obviously struck by artillery fire. Farquharson, who must have been caught in the same fire, was never found. He was 25 years old. Later that year, the Farquharson family lost another son, Walter's younger brother Frank, also serving on the Western Front. Sergeant Walter Farquharson's name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right, along with approximately 60,000 others from the First World War and his photograph is displayed today beside the Pool of Reflection. This is one of many stories of courage and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Sergeant Walter Farquharson and all those Australians who have given their lives in the services of our nation. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and we wish you a very good evening. Thank you.